This week on Check Please South Florida, a seafood lover's dream in North Palm Beach. Service was fantastic. A wine hub in the Treasure Coast. I was like, oh yeah, let's get another. And a cozy Spanish delight in Jupiter. We had a live guitar player who was fabulous. Cultural culinary secrets and global flavors. We have a passion for blending ingredients and seasonings from around the world. Additional funding for Check Please South Florida is provided by George and Helen Weaver and the Friends of South Florida PBS. You just wanted to savor every bit of that dessert. It's delicious. The best tiramisu I've ever had. There's nothing else like that in South Florida that I know about. You'll pull the cheese and it'll be all the way up to here. Hello, I'm Michelle Bernstein, and welcome to Check Please South Florida, the show where regular people from all over South Florida recommend and review their favorite restaurants. So this is how the show works. Every week we have three guests. Each recommends his or her favorite spot, and then the other two go to check them out and see what they think. This week, telecom consultant Diane Rivera says that her pick is an excellent destination for delicious tapas-style food and a cozy atmosphere that you will not want to leave. Embodying the culture of its Spanish namesake, you will fall in love with the food and ambience of this Jupiter gem. Medical sales representative Chris Theodore wants you to enjoy the relaxed atmosphere and ample wine selections of his pick. He says that you will be greeted by a caring and friendly staff that is more than glad to offer suggestions and serve you ample portions. You will appreciate the dedication of this Treasure Coast enclave. But first, cybersecurity sales director Angela Mejia says that her pick has become a staple for her family and friends, offering a solid selection of fresh seafood directly from their market. She says unique choices will keep you going back time and time again. It's located in North Palm Beach and it's called Cotton Capers Seafood Marketplace and Cafe. My name is Jessica Zabel and I'm the manager at Cotton Capers Seafood. Cotton Capers has been in this location for about 10 years, but we've been in business for almost 40 years. We got our start when my dad decided to leave the commercial lobster diving business and open a store and start to sell seafood to the public. Since then we've grown from a market to a wholesale distribution company and we now have a restaurant as well. The location that we're currently in allows us to have the restaurant, the market, and the wholesale all under one roof. And we have a lot more room to spread out and have more of a variety available for everybody every day. The thing that's unique about Cotton Keepers is that we have the market and the restaurant, so you can pick out anything that you want in the market and we'll cook it for you however you like and serve it to you with two side dishes. Our goal here is for all of our guests to leave thinking that it was the freshest, best seafood that they've ever had. It's really our goal to let the seafood speak for itself and not to fuss with it too much and keep all our recipes really simple and just use really good quality seafood. Cotton Capers is a family owned and operated local business. We just really want to work hard to bring the best seafood to the community that we can. So you said you've never waited for a table here, is that true? It's true, they're really fast and easy and, and really eager to serve you. It's a very nice place. So tell me a little bit about what it's like when you walk in. Tell me about the market atmosphere and of course the restaurant. Yeah, so right when you walk in, you're kind of greeted with a big selection of fresh fish and seafood, mm -hmm. all on ice up there in the, in the case. And then you're at the hostess stand, you ask them for a table, they've got a beautiful patio outside or indoor seating. Okay. We always prefer indoor, I like to look at the fish while I eat. Okay. Um, and the really cool thing about the menu is that you can kind of um, if you don't see something that you like on it, you can get a fresh fish from the case and have them prepare it whatever way you'd like. Any style you like? Any style you'd like. I like that. So, Chris, what did you think? Have you I, been there? I, of course, yes. Oh, I okay. love cotton capers. Um, very uh, fresh seafood. And it's interesting that they have the market on one side and then right. the restaurant on the other side. So you can go there and purchase something if you want to cook it at home or delicious food inside the restaurant. Right. Service was fantastic very friendly staff, exceptionally helpful. I've never had a GM insist up on holding our baby while oh we were goodness. eating. <laughs> and he was just super kind. And uh, food, awesome. was, food was very fresh and, and delicious and just a very friendly um, GM and staff. Diane, uh, how was your experience? I had the stone crabs. We went on a Wednesday, Thursday, okay. and they do that from four to eight. 
really delicious, so fresh. And my what is it? Is it a special price for stone crabs from four yeah, to eight? Yeah, like just, a happy hour. Yeah, it's like a happy hour thing. Huh. And my husband likes the shrimp scampi. He loves he it. He's like, there's so much garlic. And I go, too much? He goes, oh, no, not too much. <laughs> and he gets that every time. I try different things, okay. but he's like the standard guy. Angela, what did you have? I usually have the fresh stone crabs. I mean, I love stonies. I'm a South Florida girl. But they also have this really great dish called hogfish munier. Mm -hmm. And it's like a lightly breaded, egg-washed hogfish, um, pan-fried in like this buttery lemon sauce. Ugh, it's delicious. And what did you have this last time you went? I had uh, started with their clam chowder, which was delicious. It was a very nice New clam England chowder, New happy. England clam okay. chowder. And then my son had the grouper, which according to him, it was the best grouper of, of his life. He loved the grouper <laughs> and it, it was delicious. I can't disagree. Do you know how they cooked it? It had light breading. I don't okay. know if it was panko or uh, okay. it was d nice The way nice kids breading. usually like fish yeah, breaded. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a little picky. <laughs> but it was delicious. I can't disagree. And I went with the stone crabs as well, as well now that we're in stone crab season. So mm -hmm. uh, the stone crabs were excellent as well. Did anybody have dessert? I didn't have dessert. I just had some really good beer, some oh, sailfish, because it's a local brewery. Sure. And it's so cold and delicious. And who doesn't like a beer with some yeah, stonies? Yeah. I mean, come on. You're all getting stonies. <laughs> <laughs> How do you find prices there? Uh, for the quality food, I thought they were very reasonable. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a very good restaurant, mm -hmm. and um, the food food quality was definitely there. And I don't mind paying for for quality. So especially with seafood. Yeah, yeah. No doubt. yeah. Parking's easy. Parking's easy. It's a huge strip mall. There's other things in there, and mm -hmm. parking is very plentiful. Yeah. So Angela, you want to sum up cotton capers for me? If you're looking for great fresh seafood, um, also bring a cooler because after you eat and you go to the market, you're going to be sad if you don't have one. So. 100 mm -hmm. percent, Chris. Cotton Capers, great spot for lunch. Uh, if you're in the area, uh, it was about a 45 minute drive for us and we would do it again and would definitely go back. Okay. Lots of great choices. You don't have to get crab. They have beautiful seafood. Everything is delicious, day or evening. Well, for the freshest catch of the day, you can head on over to Cotton Capers Seafood Marketplace and Cafe, located at 1201 US Highway 1 in North Palm Beach. They're open Monday to Saturday for lunch and dinner. Reservations are accepted where the average price for dinner without drinks is about $50. Now medical sales representative Chris Theodore is ready to make a toast for his pick. It's located in Hope Sound and it's called the Grove Cucina and Wine. My name is Luis Reineri. I am the owner along with my wife Jennifer of the Grove Cucina and Wine Bar in Hope Sound, Florida. Hi, I'm Jen Rainieri. I'm the co-owner of the Grove Cucina and Wine. We've been told by many guests, customers, and friends that we sort of created a culinary renaissance in our community. There were not too many uh, places to eat other than for some great uh, Florida fried fish and burgers in our little tiny sleepy beach town until we came to open here March 2019. Proud to say that we run a fresh scratch kitchen. We produce everything either every day or not every other day in small batches. We like it tasty, we like it fresh. We're blessed with Chef Ian, who's our head of culinary. He's a graduate of the Johnson & Wales program in Rhode Island. And we discuss menus all the time from our monthly wine tastings, our monthly wine dinners as well as seasonal changes and generally we switch it every six months you know in the spring and then towards the fall after the summer. I hope that when someone gets here and sees our experience and how we share fellowship and hospitality they'll be so excited that they'll want to not only come back but also invite their friends. The Grove Cucina and Wine is a place where we serve every glass and every plate with a heart of hospitality and love. Tell me a little bit about Hope Sound, about the location, uh, and of course why it's called Hope Sound. Well, it's definitely a, a drive uh, from where we are. It's about an hour north of uh, wow of from where we're located, um, Deerfield but Beach. You go. But it's a fantastic little spot. It's hmm. uh, you know once you pass uh, Jupiter and you get in, get into Hope Sound, it's kind of a, a remote location until you get all the way east to US One. And uh, but I don't think I've ever been. Isn't that funny? 
It's a cool that drive. Was, it's a really it long yeah. two-lane highway. Yeah. 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 You could uh, drive right past it because, like, it's just right there. Yeah. And nothing else is there. Yeah. How interesting. Okay. Yeah. Things tend to shut down earlier up there in that, in that well, area. I think so. It's yeah. just a little more quiet. Mm -hmm. It's an easier pace. How did you find it? It was recommended by a friend. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it's a, a nice spot if you love great Italian, fresh, homemade style Italian. And if you're a wine lover, the owner's a master sommelier, very well trained in some of the finest establishments all over the U.S. Some Is the, the list mainly Italian? It's mostly Italian, but he's got wines from all over. So if you're, you're a wine lover, it's a great spot. Tell me a little bit about the ambiance of it. I thought it was really cute. It, you walk in and it feels like you're in someone's living room or something. Mm. You know, the paint on the wall is like this really pretty teal. It's just different. A lot of pictures. And then you walk through and it's a whole other room. You're like, holy cow, where'd all this come from? Huh. So it's a happen in place. Yeah. We went on a Wednesday, which was a 50% wine day. Any bottle. And we really enjoyed that. Tell me what you had this last time you went. I kind of left it up to our, our waitress, and I just said, surprise me, give me your, your favorite items off the menu. And she brought out the meatballs. And Do they come, obviously, in tomato sauce, right? Delicious. Any ricotta or anything on the top of it, or just on their own? I, I, was it I ricotta? Think it, I think yeah. that, you can yeah. add ricotta, and yes, you can also add yeah. spicy peppers, yeah. which mm. I did both. Mm. Of those I would do both yeah. of those. Fantastic. Things, absolutely. You have to. Yeah. I think you and I have the same palate. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, what else did you have? So we started with meatballs, then we had the prosciutto burrata salad okay. after that, and also the fried mozzarella. And the one cop both. I, we were a little, a little <laughs> ambitious in our, our ordering, and uh, like I said, the waitress just started bringing out everything well, that she have loved an hour from the to menu. Drive back home, so exactly. You we had, you know, if you're driving that far, you know, you're going to make it worth. Yeah. It. So. Um, the, the only caveat I would say is that the portions are very large and, you know, after the salad, there was no room for a main entree. It you was never just, had a main course? We got one just to, just to, to share, but <laughs> it was just, <laughs> for the main, we got the lamb bolognese, bolognese. Okay. and that was really a nice take on a bolognese. It gives a nice it balance of flavor. It's a little flavor. more edgy. Yeah, it's a little more bite than your typical, which I love lamb. So you know, if you like lamb, I thought it was a great take on, on a bolognese. Yeah, that that it was really nice. Sounds really delicious. Yeah, it was really nice. What did you have? We had the meatballs that were to die for. Mm -hmm. And we also shared the shrimp franchise with the pasta. And the shrimps were beautifully sized. And I really, really liked that. We didn't go for anything else, but we did have dessert. They what had chocolate pasta that they make, mm. so it's Actual real crispy. Pasta? Oh, yeah, they okay. make it and they fry it, and then they serve it between like a fluffy cream. Mm. It was really good. Chocolate shavings on the top. I was like, oh yeah, let's get another. And did you? Well, no, my <laughs> husband is a sense of reason. Well, that's a, sh yeah. that's a shame. <laughs> How about you? Um, Another person with the meatballs, love the meatballs. We added the spicy, like vinegary, jardinera type peppers on them, which were delicious, and the ricotta. And then we also shared a pesto chicken pizza. It's a pretty large pizza, Let's really thin crust. Too. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, have, Goodness. they have nice pizza, and it's a really thin crust, which mm -hmm. I like. I don't like a lot of bread in my pizza. Right. And then we also had um, that beautiful bottle of wine, and we shared chocolate lasagna as well, the chocolate lasagna. Oh, is that dessert. what it's called? Yeah. Chocolate, chocolate lasagna. lasagna. Yeah. Tell me about the prices. It sounds like they use pretty great ingredients. So Yeah, and this is a high-quality restaurant with great ingredients, and I thought the prices were very fair for mm -hmm. the quality that you're getting. Is yeah. it easy to find, easy to park? Yeah, I thought so. They have their own parkings, and there's nothing else there. So Right. Well, Chris, uh, the Grove Cucina and Wine was your pick. Sum it up for me, please. I think the Grove is a great spot if you're uh, a wine lover, if you love delicious Italian food, um, I would definitely recommend the Grove. It's a, it's a bit of a drive, but it's something different, and I would, I would recommend it. Nice. Angela? Half off wine, how can you beat that? <laughs> um, I would say go on a Wednesday for half off wine, um, and don't forget to get the meatballs and add spicy peppers. It, it's really good, like you said. It, it's, you know, Wine Wednesday. Who could beat that? And delicious food, so I'm in. You can enjoy a glass of wine and a pizza at the Grove Cucina and Wine located at 8815 Southeast Bridge Road in Hope Sound. They are open Tuesday to Saturday for dinner. Reservations are accepted where the average price of dinner without drinks is about $45.
So if you ever have been to Spain, you might have tried something called a montadito, which basically just means like a crisp piece of bread with something on top of it. It could also be fully sandwiched, you know, two pieces of bread, but a montadito usually is something right on top of the bread. So what we've done is taken a large baguette and um, cut it on a nice like bias slice, olive oil, salt and pepper, threw it in the oven for a few minutes just until it's nice and golden brown. In this pan, I'm already caramelizing some fennel. Fennel is one of my favorite vegetables. And I just chunked it up, caramelizing it in a little bit of butter and olive oil with salt. That's it. This is some beautiful fresh tuna, sushi grade A tuna. And all I'm gonna do is season that tuna up with a little bit of kosher salt and smoked paprika for a little flavor. Not too much, but a little bit. All right, since this pan is already hot, because of the fennel, I'm gonna go ahead and add the tuna to the pan. And I'm only gonna sear it nice and rare. Let's go ahead and season the other side of the tuna. A little bit more paprika, or smoked paprika, and a little bit of crushed black pepper. I'm gonna go ahead and scoop the fennel onto this plate because this is going to be one of our toppers. So, like I said, I'm just gonna sear these rare. One side is already nice and seared. Go ahead and flip it over. All right, shut off your heat. Bring your tuna over here. Slice the tuna really nice and thin. So let's go. With nice thin, this is probably about a quarter of an inch thick slice of beautifully rare seared tuna. So I'm gonna just top my bread with a few slices of this beautifully rare seared tuna. And another one, like so. Top it with a little bit of the piquillo pepper the roast, you could also do roast bell peppers. It's whatever you have around is really what makes a montadito very special. Just like so. And then of course that caramelized fennel that is just so delicious. Right on the top. And finally, a little bit of fennel tops for a little bit of green. And of course, we are talking Spanish food from Spain, so we would not be complete without a drizzle of extra virgin oil right over the top. And there you have it, my version of tuna montadito. Finally, telecom consultant Diane Rivera is ready for you to try her Spanish-inspired pick. It's located in Jupiter, and it's called Andalusia Tapas Bar and Restaurant. Soy Alberto Roche, soy el chef de Andalucía Tapas. Bueno, el menú está basado en la comida, como sabes, española. Es muy versátil el, el menú nuestro. ...y estaba siempre basado en varias... ...en todas las regiones de, de, de España... ...hemos visto, hemos notado todos... ...que ha crecido la gastronomía española... ...bueno ya que te hablo es... ...es la primera en el mundo... ...más que nada... ...y la gente cada día le gusta más... ...y cada día hay más restaurantes españoles... ...más importadores... ...la verdad que está creciendo y se, hay una buena aceptación... ...bueno la gran demanda son... ...las croquetas, empanadas, la tortilla española... ...y como no la, las paellas ¿no?... ...que nos identifican mucho a nosotros, a los españoles... ...cuando nuestros clientes se vayan... ...terminen de comer... ...me gustaría y quisiéramos... ...la administración tanto como yo, el equipo... ...que las personas se hayan sentido... ...en un sueño transportados en España... ...Andalucía Tapas Bar, es pasión... ...es buen comer, es una flipada... 
So I hear that you say that this like transports you to Spain. Is that right, Diane? It does. You go there and they have a beautiful dining room because they have flamenco shows like on the weekends. Oh. And how do you beat that? Or you could eat in their bar area, which has a real pretty hearth. And they surrounded it with lit candles because it's too warm. But uh, it's a beautiful bar. You can sit there. It's a little more quiet. And I just love the ambiance, you know. The people that work there are so nice, so helpful. You can't go wrong. It's like a date night, but right. you could go any night. Angela, you went on Saturday night. I did. How and was it? It was amazing. We had a live um, guitar player who was fabulous. He was in the bar section and we were in the dining room, but we could still hear it. Service was wonderful. And honestly, I think I may have liked this pick better than my own pick. Wow. So, Chris, first impressions? I have to echo her sentiments. I mean, it was really a great restaurant. A few love tapas and delicious Spanish wines and great mixed drinks as well. Great little spot. Diane, what did you have this last time you went? Well, there's so many things to try. They have a million things. We tried the garlic shrimp, mm -hmm. which were fantastic. Really nice sized shrimp cooked perfectly with the, I the think garlic. I had al ajillo. Yeah, al ajillo, yeah. that's yeah, it. Yeah. And we had the iberico ham, mm -hmm. which melts in your mouth. It's And they have the cutest Very little breadsticks. Mm -hmm. I yeah, don't know. you How can actually you? buy them. They're oh. they're almost um, like a corkscrew kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, they're beautiful. They're so really good. good. So good. And then we had, you know, we're on a ham thing, so we <laughs> did like a bruschetta, which was like tomato, chopped tomato. Panco then, tomate. Yeah, and then they had the ham and the mancheco with a really nice olive oil. That was really good. So we had a lot of that and. That bread will fill you up. Oh my too. gosh, it does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, and we had of course the churros. I mean, how do you not? So you didn't have a main course. No. Okay. No, no. I guess you don't really have to. This no. is tapas. It is. <laughs> how about you? What did you have? We had um, the croquetas de jamón. Mm -hmm. We also had. How were they? Were delicious. They very creamy. They were really good. I love ham croquettes, and we've moved from Broward in Miami area up to the Treasure Coast, and. It's one of the things we miss. So I, I saw them on the menu. I said, we're getting those. Okay. Um, and we also had the Iberico ham plate, which was amazing. It was absolutely worth it. It's expensive, but absolutely worth Can it. Can you see them slicing it? No. Okay. They bring it out already sliced on like a little board, and then they have those little crackers. I would probably eat that plate weekly if I could. Anything else? Yeah. We also had some beautiful ahi tuna. It's like a monterito. Mm -hmm. they, they atun, mm -hmm. they called it. And it was like ahi tuna on top of this beautiful little garlicky bread. Uh, really delicious. And then we also had a tortilla. Beautiful. Oh, tortilla española. Yes, beautiful. Was it potato? It was Just potato. Delicious. How'd you do, Chris? We started out with the cheese platter and came out with olives and delicious Spanish cheeses, great Spanish Rioja wine to complement it. I love Rioja. So nice. It was so delicious. Good, right? It was yeah. fantastic. And then again, I left it up to the waiters. I said, please, you know, bring me some of your best dishes. And they brought out a, a fried eggplant. That was delicious. Was uh, it thin? Thin and lightly fried. However they prepared it, it was just delicious. really fantastic. Yeah, okay. and then we also had the steak. They had a uh, steak special that evening. And I think it was flank. A flank steak. Okay. And their octopus was just delicately sliced. Yeah. And so it was bulbo just gallego, which is exactly. a Spanish yes, yes. Uh, octopus dish. Yes. It's so simple. It's just about the olive oil, maybe some paprika. Yeah. But yeah, it's about but the cooking, just, the cocción, the cooking of the octopus. Yeah. Really good. Yeah, it just came out. I think that was the best thing we had there. Really? I mean, it was just so good. I'm getting that oh, next fun. time. Yeah, I love the octopus. It was delicious. Their bartenders and their mixed drinks as well just brought out some very mm -hmm. unique. Really? Uh, Do you remember any of the cocktails you had? Had a smoked uh, Negroni. Ooh. Smoked Negroni, which yummy. was, you know, really interesting to infuse smoke into their, their drinks like they did. And that's it not, it, you know what? That would go really well with Spanish food. I that bet. was great. Dessert. Either one of you? We were so full, but we had yeah. to get something. So we got the we got the date stuffed uh, with cheese, nice. which was kind of it was on the top. Was of it the wrapped one. in bacon as well? It was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a good dessert. I like your style. That's so funny. So, yeah. Well, they are sweet. Dates yeah, are sweet. Right? It wasn't <laughs> overly that? sweet, but it was a uh, nice, okay. nice balanced dessert. <laughs> Well, Diane, Andalusia was your pick. Sum it up for us, please. You know, for an exciting date night, someplace romantic, totally different, out of the norm, that's a place to go. Angela? I think it's a really great place, um, great for a date night, like she said. 
Um, it's really intimate and they have that live music, so I highly recommend to go on a weekend. Nice. Chris? I love this restaurant. I would definitely go back. Um, great spot for tapas, if you love tapas, if you love great drinks, great uh, Spanish wines, um, I would highly recommend it. You can enjoy authentic Spanish flavors at Andalusia Tapas Bar and Restaurant, located at 187 Tecuesta Drive in Jupiter. They're open daily for dinner with lunch, being served Friday to Sunday. Reservations are accepted. The average price for dinner without drinks is about $40. We've had a wonderful time. I want to thank my guests, Angela Mejia, Diane Rivera, and Chris Theodore. For more about the restaurants and recipes featured in the show, if you'd like to apply to be a guest reviewer, visit us at checkpleasefl.com. And as always, find us on Facebook and Instagram. Join us next time for three new guests recommending three of their favorite restaurants right here on Check Please South Florida. I'm Michelle Bernstein, and I'll see y'all then. Thank you, everybody. Gracias. Cultural culinary secrets and global flavors. We have a passion for blending ingredients and seasonings from around the world.